What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a special barn find uh, coming your way and that is a 1970 454 390 horse 4 speed Stingray Corvette that is in desperate need of a detail as you guys can see was sitting for a really really long time. Actually since 2006 this car sat, had, was not moved, sitting under a tree with tons of lichen, algae, moss, whatever you want to call it, all kinds of fun stuff with rodents nest on the interior, built up under the hood, and tons of other fun stuff. So if you guys enjoy these kind of videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do have a quite a few barn finds coming up on the channel, as I always mention to you guys, so be sure to subscribe. But as you guys can see, this car is in rough shape and is in desperate need of a detail and does turn out almost like a night and day difference. So make sure you guys stick around for the whole video. You will not be disappointed. Some really satisfying pressure washing clips coming up pretty soon. And literally, moving on to the interior, there is a legit lawn growing on the carpet. I've never seen this in my life. And this is probably one of the dirtiest cars I've detailed and dirtiest cars on the channel. So, hope you guys enjoy. So to start the wash process, I'm going to be soaking down the body in some degreaser diluted about 3 to 1 um, to break down any stuck on moss and grime. Now um, as you guys will see in some of the clips, some of this algae and moss and lichen, whatever you want to call it, was so attached to the paint that it did actually take some of the paint with it. Um, you can see there's tons of paint bubbling on the car and missing already. So it wasn't too big a worry of mine. I tried to make as least amount of paint come off the car obviously as possible because I will be having to touch it up later and polish it out, but um, there was just really none I could do at that point. The car is in need of a restoration. Just trying to see how good we can make it for now until the car gets fully restored. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing here, but um, as you guys can see, this stuff was really stuck on. The degrees have done a great job though of loosening it up, and then we'll move on to some further steps later on in the video. So as I was saying earlier, so this thing actually sat since 2004. So just a quick little tip, if your guys car is starting to get, you know, really stuck on moss and algae like this on the paint, it's a good idea to wash it. Keep it washed because although it makes for some nice satisfying clips for YouTube, it really does destroy the paint. As you guys will see in some later clips in this video, this paint was permanently damaged from this uh, algae and left huge bubbles on all the paint. And it's just a dirty shame that a car like this, you know, to sit outside. Um, but as you guys can see, it's a big improvement with just a wash. So I hope you guys enjoy some of these clips, but um, yeah, having this moss sit on your paint is never a good idea.
So as you guys can see here, the door on the driver's side is partially stuck open. I did that as an example to show you guys. I'm not leaving the door open while washing it on purpose. But the door lock actuator is stuck closed, so it would not hinge. And then also on the passenger side, the door was stuck closed, meaning it would not open. So um, as you guys will see in some later clips, I got them both to open and close just fine. But yeah, that is the reason the door is partially open right now. So I want to address a comment I've been getting pretty often on the last two videos, um, which was about carbureted vehicles, and that was about getting water in the engine, so um, or water straight down the carburetor. So what I do to eliminate that, I go ahead and get a few microfiber towels, take the air cleaner off, and then I'll just stuff a few microfiber towels in the carburetor, in the choke, and then to minimize any water getting down there. Um, and then for the air filter, I don't care if it's getting soaked. I usually replace them. They're $10. So, um, yeah, so that's how I eliminate that problem. And then moving on though to clean this engine, I went and used some full strain degreaser, uh, with multiple rounds and then a little bit of acid based wool cleaner to try and remove some of the rust. But as you guys can see, the chrome is just coming off those valve covers. They're way too tarnished. Um, there was actually a nest built up in this engine. I'm not sure what kind of animal, but the smell was actually horrible. And the more I was washing it, the more it was starting to smell. So I tried to be as thorough as possible, um, and it did make a big improvement clean this engine made, and made this big block look a whole lot better. And for the tires, I'm going to be using some full strain degreaser and a stiff bristle brush. Just going to scrub them and get those white letters looking nice and bright.
So I decided to take off the center caps and ringers and uh, clean those up. So on all four wheels, I went ahead and went over all of them. But I went ahead and used my acid-based wheel cleaner and a couple of different brushes just to get these all nice and clean. Although there was quite a bit of rust, it did turn out pretty nice. So moving on to the interior detail and as you guys can see I'm pulling the chairs out which was quite difficult um, just because of all the rust on the seat tracks and bolts. Went ahead and pulled those out. Um, quite a interesting nest that was built up on the carpet as you guys will see um, once this chair was pulled. The carpet was totally shot. There was literally a lawn growing out of the carpet. I've never seen this in my life. This has to be one of the dirtier cars or dirtiest I've seen on the channel. But the insulation of the floorboards and uh, sound ending mat or whatever you want to call it was totally trash. It smelled like urine and the crap from whatever animal was in here um, left a whole lot behind. And then also the carpet was just trash. So it's going to go ahead and get replaced as you guys see in some clips later on. So as I mentioned in the earlier clip, the door was stuck open on the driver's side. The door lock actuator was actually frozen. And then on the passenger side, the door was stuck closed and the window was kind of stuck a little bit open. So there was nothing I can do until we actually worked on the car. I went ahead and took off the door lock actuator, soaked them in diesel overnight, and then lubed them up and then readjusted all of the uh, door uh, actuator rods and I went ahead and made the doors open and shut which was amazing but I took the opportunity while the door panels was off to clean behind the panels and made me feel a lot better inside because there was a ton of built up cobwebs and moss and I guess there was some water leaking in there from the belt line molding so went ahead and vacuumed that up and cleaned them up inside so and a big improvement on the smell as well. As you guys can see, another rodent nest built up underneath the console, but I didn't want to remove this console because it was really hard to uh, to get to any of the bolts since they were kind of rusty and I didn't want to break the console. So I went ahead and decided to leave it. I would have loved to taken it out, but it just did not want to come out of this car and I did not want to risk cracking the console. But moving on to the interior, here I'm going to be using my all-purpose cleaner along with a few different brushes and some microfiber towels to get it all clean. Now just around the gauges, I'm going to be super careful. I don't want to get any chemical or product behind the gauges. Um, these are all the original stuff in this car and I didn't want to screw any of them up. So it was kind of a sketch, you know, doing anything on this car since everything was pretty original. But I mean, it was filthy and dirty and a lot of stuff was damaged. So I tried to do my best um, to keep it, you know, as safe as possible. But sometimes on cars like this, there's to get them clean, you have to go to extreme measures.
So after cleaning and steaming all the chairs, the color was pretty faded out and there was a lot of thread showing. So I went ahead and took some SEM's uh, black upholstery paint and I went ahead and touched up both seats. And as you guys will see in some later clips, they turned out really good. Almost looked like they was reupholstered. Um, obviously there is a light rip in this chair, but it did turn out pretty nice. And at this point, anything was an improvement on this interior because a lot of these parts, a lot of people would have just tossed them away, but I tried to save them and they actually cleaned up very well, as you guys will see later on. Now moving on to installing the carpet, I went ahead and pre-trimmed this um, outside of the car and it was really close in size so I really didn't have to re-trim and take it out which was awesome. I've installed a few carpets in these older Corvettes already so it wasn't too bad but yeah I went ahead and threw some new loop carpet in it and it turned out amazing. Really brightened up the car inside and looked a whole lot better. So after installing the carpet, I went ahead and took some trim shine by Stoner and I went ahead and did all the interior trim panels including the door panels, all the gauges, everything. Um, this is one of my favorite products for older interiors because it really rejuvenates the color and lasts for at least a month or two. Um, sometimes if I want to go a little extra, I'll use some 303 Aerospace on top of this as a top coat because it has some UV protectants. On this case I didn't. I just went ahead and stuck with the Stoner trim shine and it turned out really nice. So after doing a little test panel, you guys can see here, I did get some shine back to this paint and this is just in compound, but I want to go ahead and show you guys a few examples and there'll be a couple more examples later on in the video. But as you guys can see, the algae kind of did this thing where it left a permanent imprint on the paint. Um, this car was repainted at some point, so I don't know if the paint job was of the best quality, but as you guys can see, the reflection of the light will show some of the damaged paint. So. There was really nothing I could do with this car. Some parts were coming out really shiny and some were just coming out kind of dull and that was because there was micro cracks in this paint. And I'll show you guys a better example in some clips in a few minutes.
So here's one of the examples I was talking about. And as you guys can see, there's a ton of bubbles and then a lot of permanent imprint of the algae that was built up on this paint. And as you guys can see, it just has a very blotchy finish. Now, um, usually blotchiness on oxidized cars is very acceptable on the first cut. Uh, it's usually some that occurs, but this was, you could have cut it, I mean, for three days straight. There was nothing you can do to get that blotchiness off because there was actually the micro cracks and texture in the paint that was permanently in there. So it did bring some shine and color back to it, as you guys can see, but was very far from perfect. And if you guys know me, you know I'll keep trying and trying to get these to these old cars as best as possible. But sometimes there's really no, they're just very unforgiving when they're left out like this. And um, I mean, by no means was this car perfect, but it did turn out a whole lot better. And for a compound that I'm using, I'm using Chemical Guys C4 Clear Cut Correction Compound, which I really like for these oxidized paints because of the working time is really good. And it does an amazing job at cutting out a lot of this oxidization. To add a little bit more clarity and shine to this paint, I'm going to be using some Meguiar's Shokar Mirror Glaze, which works re really well on some of these older paint jobs. And as you guys can see, it made quite a big difference. Um, glaze does work really good on filling in defects temporarily. Um, kind of, you know, at this point, the paint really didn't need a whole lot of protection. It was, it's going to get fully redone down the line, so it wasn't a big worry of mine. My biggest worry was just to add a little bit of shine and pop back this yellow, and it did do an amazing job doing that, so... Big improvement on the car, like I said, very far from perfect, um, you know, was nowhere near perfect, but a big improvement for what it was, and at this point, the car just needs to be redone. It's kind of sad that someone will leave out a 70 vet like this, but I think for what it was, it did turn out pretty well so far. And then, as for all the big blotchy paint spots, you guys are going to see them disappear in some of the later clips. Um, my brother didn't wait for me to record and went ahead and airbrushed in some of the big blotchy paint. Uh, paint spots that were missing you guys will see me touching up some with a brush but it was taking up way way too much space on my sd card which i was running out so it, it was taking me i probably filled up over 500 chips on this car and i'm not exaggerating 
Um, they were literally everywhere, and you guys will see me in the later clip with the brush touch just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it was crazy, but it did make a big difference on the car. So if you guys are wondering what kind of magic we pulled to get the blotches or the paint missing spots gone, went ahead and used the same color paint, uh, Daytona yellow with an airbrush, and then a good touch-up brush, and just kind of went over all the spots, So and then buffed it out once more. So this is the clip I'm talking about that I was just going back and forth and it was taking up way too much space. Right now we're sped up to 2500 speed uh, and it's still taking forever. So I went ahead and cut the camera. Um, as you guys will see though, I did touch up all those spots and there was plenty more you couldn't see on camera. But moving on to the before and after results, I hope you guys enjoy.
Okay guys, well that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this transformation as much as I did on this 1970 Corvette. I thought it turned out really well from what it was. Um, very far from perfect, but it was a huge transformation and it's at least drivable now. So enjoy these clips. I recorded a couple small clips of the car running and revving up. So hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one.